All right, it's Lit Book Reviews. We are here yet again, just right after some technical difficulties. Love to mm. see it. It's motherfucking 10 o'clock at night, so we're going to dive right in. I'm Elijah Wood. With me, as always, is Billy Boyd. We're here for another adventure there and back again. Did you have a good day, man? Georgia Bulldogs won, so good weekend. <laughs> yeah, man. Great day. <laughs> Um, oh man well, i'm having days day today is moon day and, you know, that's good man this is what it is but yeah then bulldogs won so you're happy about that uh some good ufc fights occurred over the weekend as well so tom aspinall bets. did you oh yeah it's like the first, i was on a hard dry streak and won a nice little parlay felt good very nice. That's what we like to see. It's on the Jets, dude. Wow. The Jets, uh, it was on the Jets game. I, I think it was a weird parlay. I think it was like, um, it was everything had to do with Brees Hall, which Brees Hall is like the running back for the Jets. It was like him to have at least two receptions and then mm-hmm. have over 40 yards receiving. And then Josh Jacobs, which is the running back for the Raiders, to have like 50 yards rushing. And then there was another like, Brees Hall over under 20 and a half yards receiving. So I did over and it was like $10 and I won like 140. So nice. I basically did you won fantasy job. this week. <laughs> I did. I think, uh, I can't remember which league I think I won in the league. It doesn't matter. So in your league, I'm yes. down by 20 and I've got one player in. it's at the half. He's running back and he's got 21 yards and a fumble. So, I don't think he's going to come through for me today. Dude, Josh Allen has two interceptions, man. The Bills have not been playing well. They need to come you back won, and win though. that game. I put what you won in our league. Yeah, I did. They need to come back and win though. The Bills do. I have. I got ten doll hairs on them. Mm, important stuff. Tom Aspinall is now the heavyweight interim champion of the world in the UFC, and Alex Pierda is the light heavyweight champion. I've literally never heard of that guy's name before. Two great life. knockouts. Mm-hmm. Alex is the one I heard that of the second knocked guy, out Izzy. The first oh, guy, okay. Tom Aspinall is from the UK. Um, he's a monster, he, dude. He Heavyweight fighter. Him, I know. Maybe. Um, but anyway, let's uh, go ahead and get into it. So uh, today we're going to talk about, you guessed it, some Brandon Sanderson-ish. Um, if you've listened to us before, uh, we have read the entire Stormlight Archive and all the novellas with it and such. We've also read Warbreaker. Um, and now we're getting into the Mistborn saga. We know that we kind of did it backwards, but, you know, that's the way we roll. So we are on The Final Imp- Empire, which is the first in the Mistborn saga by Brandon Sanderson. This book came back came out all the way back in uh, 2006. It's got 630,000 ratings with a 4.48. Um all his books are so high. I wonder what his like lowest yeah. rated book is, honestly. I'm not sure. Maybe Elantris. I feel like that's one I see the most hate for. But uh, either way, we I finished it yesterday. Uh, started the second one today, actually. So be on the lookout for that. But I finished the Final Empire yesterday. You, I read it in like four or five days. You started before me and read it in four days, I think. So you finished like what two or three days ago, or has it been longer? No, nah, I finished that like a week ago. Oh, about a week ago. No way. Really? Yeah, I finished I think on Monday, maybe. Wow. I must have started like right when you finished, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I finished it the day you started it. Classic. Um, okay, well, here we are. Uh, I give it a five. What'd you give it? I gave it a five as well. Yeah, I mean, classic Easy Brandon. Five. Easy five. Um, a lot different than Stormlight. Um I think I feel like I mentioned this in maybe the recap video we just did, but it's like a more, I don't like using the word simple because that sounds like it's like lesser or something like that, but it's just not as a complicated story, at least so far as Stormlight. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, normal. pretty isolated story with some solid world building and stuff that could happen in the future, but it felt more, more isolated. Um, so yeah, I loved it, man. Um, what are Good your... What are your initial thoughts? Um, Non-spoiler. Yeah, I I liked it a lot. I thought it was a book that had closure. I know we've talked about that. Um, to where like it almost could be, I think, a standalone. 
it was a lot different than what I thought. Um, initially, I wasn't really super keen on reading this other over other things, but I mean, I'm glad we did. It's good. It uh, it's a lot more violent than I thought. I don't know. I was just I was getting more. This is gonna be kind of not laid back, but just. Before you read it, you were concerned that it might be kind of YA. So oh, one hundred percent. But you didn't get any of those vibes, did you? Because I, I didn't. Um, I, I'm not sh- not like a straightforward YA vibe. No, 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 no. I mean, are there? I still think Brandon Sanderson's vibe is, what which this one honestly felt darker than his normal, um, like tone. I think in a weird way, and I guess that's what I was shocked about, and that's why I liked it. I mean, these characters are not, like, the protagonists are, like, not afraid to get, or they're not afraid to kill people. Whereas, yeah. I don't know, a lot of times it's just, not that Sanderson really does it, but, you know, people are dying, so, and they're not afraid to, the The protagonists yeah. are not afraid to kill people, so... I, I like that. I like I just like darker stuff, and this was actually pretty dark, whereas I didn't think it was going to be dark. So that was yeah. a pleasant surprise for me. And, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of what I didn't like about the book, and I'm I'm really just not sure what that was. I actually liked that it was shorter and a quick Yeah, read, me too. Yeah, to I didn't mind honest. that at all. So Yeah. I definitely liked it being a bit of a darker tone. Um, I mean, yeah, we definitely love death and darkness and hopelessness around here, so... Yeah. Those are great vibes. Um, I like the whole idea of like just the, I mean, it's all kind of goes back to, which I, this isn't, this is kind of like the marketing for the book. So it's not a spoiler, but like the whole idea of like the bad guy having already won, like what's that look like? So that just gave it like a dark overtone um, which and a lot for the heroes. I didn't heroes even really to, get, I, I thought that that was overplayed for people to sell it like that. Yeah, I mean, to hear Brandon talk I about it, more, I thought, you know? well, I thought the Dark Lord was, well, this, I don't want to get into spoilers, actually. Um, I was about to say a spoiler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that in that part. We'll I, I thought, um, I thought it's the not writing that, was like, great. It is, the writing's great, but to go back to what you said, non-spoiler, like, review, like, talking about that, I don't know, I've heard, I heard that, like, oh, yeah, it's a world where the bad guy won. And so you're expecting to learn a lot about a bad guy and you just, the like non spoiler is you just don't really learn. Like that's just not really the major theme. Like it is, but it's just not. Yeah. It's more directly really focused that, on per se. Um, but I see what you mean. But yeah, anyway, I, sorry. That, I just, yeah, I agree though. That was not, I don't want to say it's false advertising, but cause it was still great, but I was expecting more of a, <sighs> a battle. Well, I was just, I was, if expecting anything that I didn't get, it was more seeing the bad guy win, but he's already won at the beginning of the book and he won a yeah, long, yeah. long time that's ago. A good, that's a good um, way to put that. So yeah, hopefully that's not too spoilery, but I mean, it's not, so don't worry about it. But, um, yeah, writings, you know, classic Sanderson, was really good. Um, Dialogue was great at, you know, as usual descriptions of things. I mean, everything's just so like vivid and I mean, magic system. I feel like this is I actually was watching uh, a YouTube video the other day talking about magic systems um, in movies, though. And he was talking about a particular movie. I can't remember which one it was. It was one of the Marvel movies about how badly they handled their magic. Like there was no rules to it. And they constantly like just went back and forth to where it just like was meaningless. I think it was one of the Doctor Strange movies. Yeah, Multiverse of Madness. That's what he was talking about. Anyway, when he's referencing like the best example of how to <clears throat> deliver a magic system, he refers to the Mistborn series um, by Brandon Sanderson, Yeah, which he's referred to him a few times, so it's not a surprise. But I say all that to say the magic system was really cool. Um really well fleshed out. I liked like how it was presented like at piecemeal throughout the book, which is very Sanderson to do. Um, what, I mean, what do you think about the magic? How'd you like that? Um, I like the, honestly, it was more simple. Yeah. And to compare to stormlight, I mean, it's just less of a mystery. Um, it kind of gives it to you quicker. So, I mean, cause yeah. like I said, this, this book, you could read it and it could be a standalone. 
Whereas Stormlight, I mean, you read the first one and you're still like, what? Yeah. I mean, so, whereas yeah. this one, again, it makes sense that there is a, a sequel and more than one sequel, but at the same time, like. It stands yeah. well on its own for sure. It does. Yeah. Um, for sure. Not like a major cliffhanger. Um, so yeah, uh, characters are great. Character development is great. Um, and I mean, there's not really any characters I don't like. Like when I really am thinking about it, like normally, yeah, I mean, they're all really well. I don't like. Yeah, yeah. There's none that I can think that I don't like. Like other than people you're supposed to not like, but are well written still. Well, normally, like there's characters, and you can, I mean. I guess it's subjective if they're well written or not, but I don't know. There's some characters that I don't think are well written in Stormlight, so like I think yeah. it's stupid. So yeah. whereas I, there's not a single character in this where I'm like, where I don't get it. Like all of them, I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, I like these. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely felt the same way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would highly recommend this. I don't think uh, I think most people watching this have probably already read it. Um, because it's so popular. If you haven't, I mean, definitely recommend it. Um, especially if you've read any other Sanderson and enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm glad we're finally here, finally getting into this series cause we're way behind on it. I mean, it's been out for 17 years. So, um, I'm glad we're into it. I don't really have much more to say non-spoilery other than you should definitely read it. And it's a fun ride. The fight scenes are really, really good. There's a lot of action. Um, there's a lot of cool like political little intrigue. Yeah, a little romance. Um there's really a lot. There's like kind of like a lot of the of the things I mean, that a, a lot heist. of readers would you, look it for. It being a high story I like. You know. I missed what you said if you said something. I didn't. I heard you say I mean it's a heist. I said I like a good high story. It's a cool high story. It's cool like, you know the criminals are the good guys kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out. It's really good. We both really liked it. Gave it five stars. What would you give Definitely it out of 10? Probably like an eight, four. Yeah, that's fair. I'd probably be thereabouts. I mean, I probably would have just said a five. I don't know where you're coming from with that 8.4, but you know, splitting stuff into fractions like that is just, I mean, I don't even know what to do with that. 84 out of 100. <laughs> it is, yeah. I just That's just know, super precise. I'm thinking of other fantasies that I don't want to put it over yet. So we'll see how the second book goes, and then it'll probably get higher. Because I've only heard good things about the second book. But also, yeah, I would same. say, non-spoiler, this is a good place to start for Sanderson. If you're not looking to yeah. buy into a 1,300-page book, like this one is yeah. so easy to read and it's like, it'll, it'll hook you to where you want to then now read the 1300 page book. So, yeah, I think so. And like, I think that, uh, it's probably, it's not necessarily better because I mean, I think I very much, I mean, we very much enjoyed the way we've read Sanderson, but there's not like a whole lot of, and not to be super spoilery again on any of it, but there's not a whole lot of like crossover implications as there are in other Sanderson books that are in the, you know, all the same universe. So if you're not like, you know, ready for that or wanting to get into that at this point, you'd rather just kind of see what Sanderson is like without there really being a lot of implications for other things. I think this is a really good place to start as well. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, I will say a lot, most, a lot of people, I guess most people who like reading aren't, but I know a lot of people, they don't want to read long series. It's too much of an investment to them. So like seeing a book yeah. that's, I mean, cause technically, I mean, we feel like this book is shorter, but again, that's also because we've been freaking built on the Stormlight Archive. So this is literally nothing compared to Stormlight Archive. But I mean, it is still like, I mean, my edition was four or 640 pages. I think yeah, mine was it's right like around in the there. mid fives to the 600. So, I mean, it's still a pretty good book. The next one's book, longer. But... The next one's like 100 pages longer. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hate to say, though, like, and like dunk on people who don't read a lot and then be like, oh, this is a super short book. You guys are finished it quickly. But I mean, because you should, but it is yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody's a at lot their own less It's definitely than yeah. Stormlight. Yeah, for sure. Um, like, so, yeah, check it out. Count was for this. Mm, I, bet I know Brandon has talked before like, like about the approximate. I bet it's a third of count. the Way of Kings. 
Yeah, it's probably like around 100, 150,000 words. Because I think Way of King... No, no, no. Yeah. What's my call? It's like, they're all like 400 now. Because he yeah. said that the newest like one's going to be like 470. And I'm what? like... What? Oh my God. It's gonna he be said like... he's at like four something ridiculous. He's already at like 450 or something. And then he said he's going to cut down, I think. like Because he's at 88%, so he's going to put a little more into it. But then I think he wants it to be... In that, and John's like, gonna be 1700 pages, that John. which is fine with me, honestly, dude. He could write a 3000 page book in this series, and I would absolutely devour it. How quickly do you think? Well, I guess what sucks, dude, is people are gonna get like editions before the real world. I was gonna say, like, it'd be kind of a cool flex to be like, Yo, I'm the first one to finish book five, yeah. I mean, you know? like, how quickly yeah. can you finish it once it comes out? But anyway, we're on a tangent now, but all right, yeah. That's non-spoilers of the final right. empire. Yeah, so spoilers. Um, I mean, where you want to start, dude? It, uh... I honestly want to start with a... I mean, obviously at the end, but with a less than like what you think I'm going to say, the thing that got me the most, which really shouldn't have, um, was Marsh being mm. a... Um, uh, what is it? Not ambassador, influencer, TikTok dancer, uh, inquisitor. infiltrator, inquisitor. Yeah, and I know something along those lines. Inquisitor, a steel dude. inquisitor. Which is, yeah. dude, the steel inquisitors were wild, dude. That was definitely. Yeah. I was honestly a little upset that we found out how to kill those so early, and it seems very easy. I was kind of hoping that that was going to be prolonged a little bit longer because now, I mean, obviously they're still super OP, but. I was kind of wanting that secret to keep going for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I feel that, but I think it is still. I mean, I, they they stated there was only twenty of them in existence, and like ten of them were in Luthadel, so there's probably like nine or ten still out there thereabouts. Unless that was not true, and there's like a hundred of them. But that being said, Marsh is the one who did it, who pulled the pin out of the back of the neck or whatever yeah. of that one. So I feel like you still either have to be like a pewter arm, like a strong person or a misborn or otherwise another inquisitor to actually yank that thing out. So even though we do know, I feel like it's not like any just, you know, ska can walk up and kill an inquisitor. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. Ska, but, ska. Every time but yeah, that, that part was crazy, I man. I wasn't expecting uh, that at all. And then I realized they had called him iron eyes uh, earlier in the book before he was an inquisitor. That was like a nickname he had had was iron eyes. Uh, yeah. And then he ends up literally having spikes through his eyes and out the back of his what, head. What, what foreshadowing? What foreshadowing, dude? I mean, let's just pause right there, dude. What kind of life do you think you're living if you have two spikes going through your head? Dude. I mean, you wake up I mean, and you're honestly, an inquisitor. Honestly, if I have the, the powers of an inquisitor, <laughs> probably killing some ska, you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> taking out your anger on the ska. <laughs> No, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, mean, that's I rough, don't know. Dude. I mean, the way that they see and the way he explained it through, you know, being able to see little particles. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of wild. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, that sounds brutal, honestly. Yeah, I think but, I'd rather be a Mistborn. Honestly, I think I'd rather <laughs> be a Ska. I don't know. I don't know if I'd rather be a Ska. Because, I mean, it depends. My Ska's getting, like... um you're in the pits of Hathson, and you're not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you'd My be if you were Scott. I'm soothed into thinking I just need to stay where I'm at. Because that sounds horrible. I don't know, man. You like, soothe me I'm right. I mean, riding. I might be game, you know? I guess, but <laughs> I'm getting soothed by infiltrators or whatever they're called. Inquisitors. or Well, not inquisitors. What are they? Um, I guess they're just Alamancers? soothers that work for the for Yeah, the soothers. Mm -hmm. Um for that big big government but yeah i don't know what i would rather be honestly that or would you rather be say zed and being a eunuch i mean no and i don't really like <laughs> i don't think i envy like i think if if that's a good question though would you rather be a furichimist whatever the word is or an alamancer i think i would pick alamancer because the what the ter what what say zed does seems kind of like a real grind to like keep that game up you know what I mean? To learn. I mean, he's for the, he's the definition. Well, not just to learn it, but like to do it. Like, you know, 
if you want to save up age, you have to spend a bunch of time like super old and weak. Um, yeah. But I guess it was funny, dude, at the end when he would just like shrivel up and then just (laughs) like, yeah, I was like, like, what's He was like, yo, let me, he's like, yo, let me power down for like 13 seconds so then I can power up for four. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. He literally shriveled up for like 10 seconds, so then he could go Super Saiyan just for a little yeah. burst. When he shriveled up on the ground like that, I was like, is that the Emperor God Leto? Did he just get touched by... Oh, the, what does he call God Emperor Leto? Did he just get touched by water? I don't um, know to think about him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that. Uh, so yeah, the uh, Marsh being an Inquisitor at the end was wild. Um, says it and his powers are crazy, but the two mains being... Vin and Kelsier. Um, I mean, what were your thoughts on both of those characters and their their arcs? I'm still unsure. I mean, obviously, I understand why it had to happen as far as martyrdom, but he was just, he carried it for me. So, I mean, obviously, he went down in a really sick way, so I can't be that mad about it. But at the same time, it's like, it just sucks that I'm not going to get to read more of him. Because it's not that I don't like Vin. I like Vin, but I just don't relate to 16-year-olds with depression. So it's just really tough for me to – if that's all I'm getting, if when the way it was written, I liked it because that Mm -hmm. wasn't it. It was broken up. So, I mean, and we got to see her grow and do some cool things. And I think she is a cool character, but, like, she's not – I mean, she. I don't even know if she's in my top five of my favorite characters from this book. So – but again, she's still really? cool, like a good character. I mean, yeah, dude. I just, I mean, there's only I like think... one other character that gets fleshed out at all, being yeah. Ellen. I mean, say so what do you have like Ham like, and Doxon above Marsh, her for sure over her? I just, dude, that's I, wild, dude. That is I absolutely wild. I mean, just tell me how original her her <clears throat> character arc is. As I mean, far as, oh, I'm a slums girl who doesn't want to let anyone in. And it's just, I don't know. And that's I not mean, like that's one a of trope. Those, like, that's what tropes are. Yeah, I know. And I don't series. like that trope. So, like, I'm good. <laughs> I'd mean, rather have the sick savage who is overconfident to compensate for the darkness in his life that he just gets killed at the end. That's what I'd rather have. <laughs> but, I mean, I still I mean, like her enough. character. It's just not what I want to read about, like... Again, if she ends up becoming eighty percent of this book, I'm gonna be upset, honestly. So, yeah. but I mean, she's I definitely the feeling. main character of the series. But I, I know what you mean. Gonna rise up. Yeah, I think so too. I definitely think we'll be getting more of a few of them. But she's definitely the main character. I, 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 I can't decide which one I really enjoyed more. Um, I'm not. I don't have a problem with that trope. Um, and if it's well written, I think it can be really enjoyable to read. So I really liked Vin. I thought she was a good character, and I thought that, like you mentioned, her growth like compensated for that that kind of for her being 16. trope. Well, just for that trope, like her growth in that you trope know, compensated like, for a yeah, uh, saying it had nothing to do with her age. I was saying that the fact that she has growth compensates for the trope of a young girl that's depressed and doesn't want to let anybody in and all that stuff that you were just saying. So anyway, I thought she was a cool character. Um, she clearly just, is like, huh? I was going to say, I'm sad that her brother's actually dead. I was really hoping that he was alive somehow. We could, you know, see something. I was hoping he was going to be a bad guy, honestly. Like, I feel like that would have been a really cool... Like, I know her dad was yeah. kind of substituted in for that, which then he gets killed. So then, I don't know. Like, I just... I'm curious to see where this is going to go because I feel like all the former problems are gone now. So, it's... Like, I mean, not that I... I trust Brandon to create new ones. Like, and I know where it's going to get head. Like, I can already tell. But, you know what I mean? It's just like, I wish at least her dad or her brother was still alive. Like just for some yeah. more of that, because he built that up really well, I thought. And then mm-hmm. they're just both. I mean, I, I guess there was resolution with him not giving up on her. But yeah, I mean, I definitely thought he was going to show back up. I mean, it was cool training. that he didn't give up on her, but uh, when he got tortured. But yeah, I definitely thought he was going to show up in some capacity at some point in the series. And then her dad getting killed. Like, I mean, I thought he was going to be a more of a part of it as well. than the first time she's ever around him. I and, mean, doesn't seem like her character really cares, like didn't care at all that he died or anything, yeah. which I guess makes sense. But at the same time, I would have thought there would have been more at least internal 
either dialogue if not conflict in her when that happened um but you know she also didn't know him and he you know seemed like he probably wasn't a good person so maybe you just wouldn't care um yeah but uh yeah uh, and she clearly has some sort of special something from what kelsey or told her and then her being able to like it seemed like at the end when she defeats the lord ruler she like somehow uses the myths to like get power which isn't a known thing but she seemed to have done it um so yeah i'm so curious about the whole like foreshadowing basically the whole time that she had about can people who are a certain power like level still feel if you like st- like kind of get past the um whatever element you use to like make people not know you're using your powers um because like the whole yeah. time it's like did his wife actually betray him or not and then she yeah. is like on that whole vibe of like, well, no, like the Lord ruler, I swear he's getting in even when I'm shielding, but then like, there's no resolution with that. You know what I mean? Like you don't find out cause they just kill him. I lost you for a second. I was just saying that you don't really find out like if that's real or not. Cause they kill like, cause he dies. Like, I'm sure it'll, like, lay up for the next book, maybe. I don't know. But I sh- that was, like, one of the few things that I thought. Um, yeah. I was wanting to see kind of either tied up or at least, like, hinted to one last time. And it wasn't really hinted to. I know she kind of says something like, oh, well, the only per- or I think says that's like, well, the only one who probably would have known that question is dead. But yeah. it was about something else. It wasn't even about that, I don't think. Maybe it was about that. I don't know. You know what yeah, I'm talking it was, about, though? Yeah, it was. That- yeah, it was I, I think they might there might have been something else they were referring to, but I know what you're talking about. Using the copper, it's like a co- the copper cloud is what they call it, of like keeping people from seeing you yeah. use an allomancy or whatever. Um, but yeah, she can pierce through it apparently, which she felt that the Lord Ruler was able to do too. Um, but that was something too to do with and what Marsh was teaching her, right? Uh, maybe. Um, because Marsh was teaching her like about. Sense. Like, since what exact, like, metal they were using and, like, what, like, if a soother like was working on you, what exactly they were trying to make you feel. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if those two things are related or what, but it definitely seems like that's for future stuff. And to go back to what you said about the future, I think the big thing that's, like, inferred is that when the Lord Ruler dies, he says, um, you have no idea what I'm, like, have been doing for you, like, what I do to protect you. So I think it has something to do with like the deepness or whatever. Um, And the next book's called Well of Ascension. So like, obviously we're going to figure out like what actually happened there and what the deepness is. So I think that's what it's going to end up being is just Vin figuring that out. And I'm sure there's going to be like additional characters, whether there's other Mistborn or like other people like that that get involved. So um, yeah, I, I assume that's what it'll focus on. And then obviously the, you know, the whole final empire fell. So who knows what's going to happen? I'm sure there'll be like wars or whatever people trying to take power. So, um, but yeah, to he go back literally to go anywhere, I feel like though, he kind of left it. Yeah. Where it's wide open. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, sticking on characters. I mean, we didn't talk about it much, but Kelsier was, it's hard for me to decide if Kelsier or Vin was my favorite character. Um, they're definitely right there. I mean, they're the two main ones so that makes sense, but, uh, Kelsier was just so cool, dude. Like, he was just a complex character. Like, he was like this super, like, you know, living legend kind of status. But he also obviously had a lot of conflict and flaws throughout the book, which made him more interesting. So, oh, he was my favorite character by far. He was yeah. so cool, dude. He was so yeah. well written. Rest like, in his peace. confidence and, like, I don't know. For him to, like, actually have planned that out was definitely kind of got me. Yeah, that was really cool. Like pretty much planning to die. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. was that was a cool move. I mean, just the first chapter alone, um, when he's off on that plantation and shows up, and then just you find out that he just like killed everyone. I was like, yeah, all that my my boy. That dude going hot. I love a guy who is like who's funny and like lighthearted, but then just will kill people. Yeah, like just love a good sociopath. <laughs> I love that. I love how <laughs> as someone who just dis- disassociates um, <laughs> and just kills. Yeah. 
but which is actually kind of a a bit of a small theme for him in the book because there's like the whole thing about uh like internally when he's killing people he's like well they're working for like this side of things yeah. so they made their decision and then Hammond comes in later and he's like yo like those were regular men that like they may have made a mistake but they were just trying to like you know live their life which i can see both sides of that argument you know obviously so yeah it was i was it was very that was good because the character development was really nice because he's clearly struggling with that kind of stuff and he's like throughout he's kind of like having this internal dialogue about becoming this like famous like you know person and like how that's going to affect and so all that comes together once in the end he dies and you find out it was his plan you're like oh like he had to figure it out all along yeah um, what a genius he and i kind of liked how it showed the plan i mean i like the heist um i feel like that's just not done enough in fantasy like it felt original because i mean i know there's like a heist trope but like i I, I just that's not really normally fan like there's just so many fantasy tropes that are just done over and over and over again and so yeah. to, to do the little heist criminal party I liked a lot like I love a good underground movement and I don't know all the characters like felt unique I think I told you this the only two characters that felt very similar to me even though like I did know the difference between them was Hammond and um Docs and and it's only their voice. Like when, if I were just to read a quote, like they just, like if I were to just read a quote, I wouldn't be able to tell who they were. Whereas like Breeze, I knew, like Kelsey, yeah. I knew, Vin, I knew, Says it, I knew. Like if they were to just say yeah. something, I would know it. But they yeah. just felt like they were both kind of the even keeled. Like they were going to think about things. Um, yeah, I know. I guess Hammond was le- a little bit less of that, but they were both like very reasonable people. So, yeah, I would say the only like real because, yeah, Dachshund definitely I think Dachshund is more so like kind of just that even killed, as you said, because Hammond just had that one facet that made him more unique as far as the dialogue of always wanting to ask those philosophical questions. Yeah. So that was the only kind of thing. Other than that, I agree. They were pretty similar, like in their use and like, you know, their dialogue. But I guess I was confusing that. That's a good point. He was always the I was. That Hammond's always the one that was asking those big questions. Yeah. And I guess I was like kind of pairing that with Dachshund being kind of yeah. very thorough and thinking through yeah. things, but he's just doing it a different way. But no, I liked the cast of characters. Um, I even liked, um, I mean, she made me mad, but the one girl who was just the worst, dude. The, who was just uh, the Sean, definition of disrespectful. Sham? Yeah, dude. One that used and to then be her being a misborn, L- yeah. yeah, her being a misborn and getting her getting killed, it was that felt really good. Yeah, dude, that scene was sick, man. When Vin killed her, that was that was a super sick scene. I liked it that. Was that was one of the but, better ones in the book, probably. Oh, for sure. Um, but I think I told you this. I mean, it's just a testament to Sanderson's good writing, because you know I don't like liking certain things. And he made me like things that I don't want to like, which again like, is like just what? testament to good writing. I'm reading about ball scenes and, you know, uh, the yeah. um, like romance that is involved in that. And I'm not going to lie. I was like, I mean, obviously I read the book in four days. I was, it didn't, yeah. it didn't hinder me at all from, if anything, obviously I was still just as interested, which sucks that he's able to do that so well because i don't want to enjoy that type of stuff but i mean it was just good like even that political intrigue in that and then even the little romance i was like i can't even lie i was slightly interested and i didn't even want to be so it just shows he really does know how to write things well yeah no i i agree um and that's i mean that obviously is what it comes down to is is the writing which is a like just saying that oh the writing this the writing that like I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I couldn't pinpoint what it is in the writing that makes I can't it so either. Good. Yeah, I but just, you just I know, have, like, yeah. oh man, like you know, if you if it locks you in in a certain way, you're like, okay, the writing's very good, um, and that it definitely had that. The really, like you said at the beginning, I can't think of like a uh, like a factor in this book that like I didn't enjoy. Like there was nothing yeah. that. Like, whereas in Stormlight, like, there are, there are some specific characters or maybe some specific, like, like, arcs where you're like, oh, man, like, some of this is, like, juicy stuff, but it's, there was none of that in Mistborn. There was no time I flipped open a chapter and realized what part of, 
you know, what was going on where I was like, dang, I want to kind of get past this. Like it was all just very, like it wasn't sluggish at any point. Like, you know, there were good, like many arcs throughout the book, like in each part, really. So I think it's three yeah. parts. Um, I agree. So yeah. Um, what other characters? We haven't really talked about Ellen. Um, I like him. He's, he, uh, yeah. he has some intrigue to him. I mm-hmm. still don't, I want to kind of, we need some more bad guys here, dude. Like, I just, there's not really, in this book, I will say, there weren't a lot of bad guys. The bad guys were the fictitious, I mean, I guess it's all fictitious, but like, they're the unseen, none of the bad guys were like real and in front of your face, you know? Yeah. You were more for a while, like henchmen. Yeah, it's for the while, it's nobility and whatnot, but then you kind of realize that they're also like chaff in a way. And so right. it's like the one girl was kind of mean who gets killed to Shan or whatever her name is. Mm-hmm. But even the Lord Ruler, you don't even really get to know much about him. I know he comes out and kills a bunch of Ska, so you know he can't be a good guy. But you don't even get to meet him really personally. So like yeah. until the very end. And then even that, it's short. So I don't know. I just need more like forefront bad characters. Because yeah. and so I'm hoping I would honestly like Alin to be a bad guy. I don't think he's going to be, but yeah, I, don't think so. I, I also don't think he's in support as much as Vin thinks. Like, I think he's in support in a way, but you know what yeah, I mean? I mean, cause he yeah, wasn't trying to overthrow sure. the Lord ruler. That wasn't his mission, but I don't yeah. know. He does kind of seem I, like, I guess at the end he's, he seems pretty, uh, ready to just give it all up yeah i mean i think he's on board but i could definitely see like if they like are in a relationship or whatever in the future i could see there being like conflict just as far as either the way they want to get stuff done or what they want to see happen so who knows i mean yeah because who's the bad guy now you know what i mean like at the end of that book i know you've read a little bit of the first book but like who now is the bad guy it's the deep yeah i mean i I mean it's like something who knows if that's even it in this next book Yeah. yeah There's not like a know. person like Odium. You know, there's not yeah. like a, oh, that's the bad guy, you know? And yeah, that does make me nervous. I mean, I trust Brandon Sanderson, so I mean, whatever, but yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean. I definitely can't like, I mean, it's, he's going to have to build up a whole other character, I would imagine, to be the bad yeah. guy. Um, which, you know, hopefully we do get. That is probably, if I could say anything, I, I would have, which I'm all about and I understand and appreciate the, like, um, the idea of keeping a bad guy mysterious, like, like a Darth Vader, like Darth Vader obviously had scenes, but when you actually look at like the amount of time he's, he's on screen in his first movie, which is a new hope, like he's barely actually in the movie, which gives him a lot of mystery and more intrigue. So I get that to a degree, but you yeah. really don't get anything of the Lord ruler. Like, well, then he dies. So then well, that's what like, I'm saying. You don't get anything ever because he dies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then you find out the weekend and then like still survive. And then now it's like he's kind right, of on the yeah. back end. That would be interesting. But I mean, it, I still trust it. But yeah. 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 I'm sure I'm sure it'll still be great. Um, But yeah, I mean, other than that, like kind of like you've been repeating, like I trust Brandon. So it's not like I think something else should have happened. But I was kind of hoping for more like dialogue and kind of more information which you do get his backstory and like you just realize he's a different person than you thought he was from the from that log book um so you get an idea of who he is but you don't really and i think that's what the next book is probably going to reveal a lot of because of the title being the well of ascension you'll figure out what he actually like did and like maybe why um yeah not that it matters though because he's dead so because he got I mean, he, he shriveled up and died so fast. Yeah, he did. Um, but but I, yeah, was, I, uh, I'm ready to learn more about Sazed and see what he's got going on. And then um, I'm curious to see what Marsh looked like in his thing is. Uh, Breeze was another character that I liked. Um, yeah. He brought some good relief, like, and his voice was, like, really different. Um, yeah. And then I did like, too, that... Um, that the Lord um, Vin's fictitious uncle, he ends up being that. Oh, the Renault? Guy like playing, yeah. Yeah, he ends up being the thing that now is that yeah. now has Kelsier's body, I think. Or the maybe Contra. he doesn't. 
He doesn't he anymore. Just, he, he had it for he a little it, while. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, and then he yeah. had something else. Um, but yeah, that was cool, and it was cool how they explained like he was a, like he referred to himself as a what do you say like a, like an older mist wraith basically. So yeah. like that's kind of interesting. And then he was like, about. yeah, basically you're in charge of him now. Then she's like, well, I don't want him because he ate Kelsier. Yeah. And this is exactly in that. And those are the little moments that just take me like, are you serious? You have this sick thing and that's what you're going to worry about. It's just, yeah. And like it's in real life, what that would be year old would say. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like in real life, I would also be frustrated by it, but I think you're supposed to be because she's hopefully she figures that out. Cause that seems like a, a waste to just throw away. Yeah. I mean, I think she will because he says, uh, you know, you pay him an ATM and he had already, Kelsey had already paid it. Like, so it would be a waste to like not use them. Yeah. Which that's another um, interesting thing. The ATM was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I will say if we're talking like to segue a little bit away, but the ATM makes it to where I don't know how they turn this into a, an adaptation because how do you mean? some of the other stuff, I feel like is doable for an adaptation, mm-hmm. but then oh, when you mean like if they made a movie involved? Yeah, like any adaptation, unless if it's gonna yeah. be or any live action adaptation. Live action. I okay, say. gotcha, gotcha. Because yeah. yeah, I think they could do it really well in in an anime or any sort of yeah. animation. But anyway, that's that's the only thing that sucks, dude. Which a part of it is again just how good, how much better reading is than than watching a movie. But it's just yeah, I, for these sure. things are so tough. I feel like to yeah. And especially like it's, when, <clears throat> when he's like describing like, okay, now she's burning this, and then now she's burning that. Like he just does such a good job yeah. of putting that in there to where it's not repetitive, but like, yeah, it's just. I guess you could just watch a character do it, and you know that's what they're doing. But well, and that's the, you know, that's the cool. That's one of the things that that video I was referring to kind of touches on about having magic systems. Like you don't realize, especially if you're just watching a movie, and then even more so, especially if you're not like either a reader or like a big film person, if you're just like a standard person trying to be entertained by a magic movie, it's probably not going to occur to you. But like when you set up like all these rules and all these different things, and then all these internal things are going on, like you just said, like Vin or Kelsey would think in their mind, okay, I'm going to burn copper real quick. And then I'm going to do zinc to do this. And I'm going to do brass to do this real quick. Whereas in a movie, all you could see is the actions because it's really goofy in a movie for the exterior sound to go down and then you hear the person's thoughts in their head like that's really dorky so it's like i think the only way it could work like i I wouldn't want to see a live action of anything i've read from brandon sanderson so far i would love absolutely love to see an arcane level animated show though that that could be so good because then you can do goofy things like like that that. oh yeah i'm i mean yeah i dude. speaking of that is totally random but just to attest to what you just said, the new Across the Spider-Verse movie, Miles Morales animated Spider-Man movies. The yeah. second one came out this year. I watched it for the first time like a couple weeks ago. It was super good. One of the characters, like, you know, it's a bunch of different universes. So a lot of them look different. And then a lot of them have different animation styles to make them look even more different because their universe is just whatever. And one of them, his name is Hobie, I think his animation is constantly changing. Like there's this little background around him, and like things are just constantly changing. Apparently it took them three years to just do his animation alone for one character. That's only in like, like a combined 15 minutes, like on screen, maybe a little longer took them three years, apparently just to do his animation. So to attest to what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can't imagine just what to, that's a huge stormlight spoiler. I probably shouldn't even say this, but, just imagining an animation scene where Dalinar pulls certain characters from a certain place into another certain place at a really pivotal moment. I mean, just that scene alone, I feel like, all right, we got to spend a year just making this scene happen on yeah. the screen. Um, I mean, so many but that's the thing about reading is kind of the whole point I was making to just piggyback better. off your point is like, it's better because you can get all that internal stuff and like, understand why actions occur whereas we you just can't get that across in movies without like blatant exposition or without a character monologuing right before they fight someone which just isn't realistic whereas in a book you can have a person 
person in the middle of doing something in a battle and thinking. So you can have that like slow mo and then you can be like, okay, that happened, you know. Reading's just better, man. It's superior it's a superior experience. Watching movies so is easier is. and I enjoy it, but reading yeah, is just a superior same, experience. Man. It's not the same even a little bit, but yeah, I'm I'm excited where this is going and I think that at least the tone of the world, uh, you know, I like. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm in. And I like that it's yeah. a little bit quicker in a way. Like it's a different yeah. form of satisfaction. It's not that let me sit down and grind through a stormlight and I'm going to love it, but it's going to be a grind. Like this one, I mean, it felt like it took me no time at all to read this book. I was in and out and I got yeah. everything I would want <clears throat> from a story out of it. Um, yeah. So... Again, I, I liked it. I feel like there was something else, though, that I was going to... Oh, like, yeah, the magic system. I know we've already talked about it, but when he's ex- specifically explaining um, whichever one it is for you to be able to, like, pull yourself, and it's, like, all these blue lines connecting to, like, different... Mm-hmm. Dude, I just thought that was so sick for some reason. Yeah. Like, I thought that, that was a really sick. cool concept to mm-hmm. kind of add in, you know? Yeah. And it's almost like an aimbot, like... Yeah. vibe of what I got is like a video mm-hmm. game. Um, when I also love cool. just with the magic system, how <clears throat> it's not like, it's not like, Oh, you're a misborn, you're Superman and you can just do whatever the heck you want. Yeah, you can you fly any direction you want. You can punch anything. Well, you have to train, but then you also like, you have to understand your weight against like an object that you're using and against another person, like all these, all these different like skills come in. So it's cool because it just makes room for like there being levels and like upgrades and like people having growth through that. So you can run out, you can mess up, like you can, you know, make a slight mistake and it could, you know, potentially get you killed. So I just like that because as cool as OP characters like Super Superman or Omni Man from Invincible are, there has to be like, especially for a character like Vin, who's not God. She's supposed to be this young like girl who's just kind of figuring things out. There has to be that. Otherwise, it's like you kind of turn a character into a Mary Sue, whether it's a girl or a guy. You just turn them yeah. into a character that's like, oh, they can never fail, and they're like super OP, and no one can stand against against them. Um, so yeah, I like that about the magic system a lot. It's really unique. I think my favorite thing is like my favorite aspect of it is the whole like like pushing the coins and like going against another person and how the weight has an effect. So you have to like, you know, switch to something else or whatever. It's just cool how quick like, you know, you still have to be like you gotta be like you gotta you gotta have some serious hand eye coordination to be a successful misborn. <laughs> like Dude, it really reminds me a lot. Um it's it's very similar in I don't know how, like I don't know. I I guess it came out later, so you can tell he definitely got inf- inspiration. But Brian McClendon's like newest book, the um mm-hmm. whatever, I should know the name of it, something about glass. Essentially, though, like the the power is, it feels really similar. It's all hereditary and it's rare, and mm. there's all these houses and like it's more on like if the whole book was like about Ellen Venture, it's like kind of that narrative. But anyway, mm-hmm. then certain certain families have certain powers, and the one guy he's he's called a glass dancer, and essentially he can control glass, but it is based off of like skill and stuff, and so. Anyway, it's just kind of a similar magic system that you can be OP, but then there's also like, you know, there's always going to be a way to counter everyone. So like, as long as you know the counter, know it's coming. So, I mean, it's not just like you said, you know, I am, I'm God. So I, oh, I win every time and no one's going to beat me type of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what do you think your favorite, was your favorite scene when, uh, Kelsier dies, you think, or because, dude, to get, like reverse a little bit in yeah, that man. scene when when the Lord Ruler gets absolutely stabbed straight through the chest and like is just keeps walking and is so unfazed. I was like, I was oh. like, oh, Kelsier is about to die. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sick. Uh, yeah, I mean that scene ha- would have to be up there. Um, I think the scene where Vin kills Shan or Sean or whatever. Yeah, that was cool. Is really cool. Um. The scene, I mean, it, right before to get them out of jail school. Yeah, when I mean, dude, when 
Kelsier kills that one Inquisitor was super sick. He like jams his yeah. head spikes into that like wood and then beheads him. That was so sick. Um, so yeah, I mean that, the Kelsier dying is just like because I mean action is great and like magic is great and swords are great, but like something like that, dude. It it, it rung similar to like Light Song's sacrifice. Something where you get this great charismatic yeah. character who you don't want to lose from the party. You don't want to lose their dialogue from the story. So it like genuinely hurts that they're gone for a reader when it like is a really meaningful death. That's just like, it's hard to beat that kind of scene. So I'm still really hoping that he's alive as well. I don't know, man. I mean, his bones got devoured. So I don't think so. Dog. Come on, man. He's gone, bro. Dude, they can gone. gather them together and do a spell from <laughs> leak Reefa's book. And then he's back. <laughs> Or maybe they could just get Tony Stark's little time machine thing that he made and mm. just go back and just grab him out of there. You never know, man. Yeah. That, that but would be an option. That, and that's a whole other, to one more thing that I didn't think about was the whole like big character thing with uh, Sezed is how he stores so many religions. That was a really cool aspect how yeah, that was. Kelsier would constantly ask him about religions and then like, Kelsier is essentially essentially knows that he's starting a religion. He doesn't see himself as a god, but he sees this as the way for the ska to like finally stand up and rebel if they have yeah. this basically the Christ figure that dies for them. Um you know, so uh yeah, that was really cool. The whole says it and it was also and, very anti, which I guess this is his first writing on his own, but I mean, he's not really big into killing off main characters, so this felt yeah. uncharacteristic of him, even though this was his first one. So, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that I definitely was not expect. I, I will say I was not expecting Kelsier to die until, like, I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe he will, but I was really thinking he was going to be a constant throughout the books. But then that moment you just said, dude, when the Lord Ruler takes not one but two spears to the chest and he's fine, I was like, exactly. oh, this is it. Dude. Like, this is it for Kelsier. Um, but yeah, dude, I found some sick like fan art online too of like all the different characters and the Lord Ruler I stuff. Honestly, is the coolest, really, dude. I really don't even. I haven't looked at anything, so I'm not sure what any of the characters look like as far as a fan fan art perspective. Dude, I'm about to I'm about to send you just a, a handful. Here, no, don't brother. send me any of them because I want to. We can do it on Wednesday. What do you mean on Wednesday? When we do a recap or a weekly uh. Oh, okay. Recap. We can do that, and then do the. Um, well, we can just sprinkle a little bit of that in because I know we'll probably do. Uh, yeah, we'll be talking about the, our our fantasy bracket coming up. Oh, is that what we're doing Wednesday? And then next Wednesday, you want to do the. Um, or I guess prologue. maybe we could do. No, we can do. Yeah, no, we can Wednesday. do the prologue first because we're not starting the the bracket for a little while. Okay. Listeners aren't going to know what we're talking about. Viewers uh, aren't going to know, but you'll know soon. We got. It. We can cut a it fun little thing we're doing soon. Um, oh yeah, I forget that there's such thing as posts. This isn't live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the chat's not uh, up. So yeah. What, uh, what are your uh, other thoughts? Um, uh, I was thinking, I was going to ask you, I don't really know what my answer would be necessarily, but I was curious two things. One, where you rank this like amongst all the Sanderson books you've read and then where you would put I guess I'm not going to ask Vin because she would be pretty low, but where you would put Kelsey or amongst all the Sanderson characters that you have read. Mm, that's a good so question. Book, He's actually I'll answer, pretty high, honestly. Yeah, he'd be up there. I would say books, though, man. I mean, obviously, un other than like Edge Dancer and Dawn Shard, Is like all the main books. Yeah, because it's not better than any of the Stormlight to me. So it's really a question of whether or not it's better than Warbreaker. And I don't... It might be... I don't know though. I was man. really just thinking about that when you were asking that. I just don't know. The only know, reason so, which I is don't crazy know is because it's so some good. Characters that are just. But all right, think about it like this. Oh, you can't even though. Would would it be as good? Would you even think Warbreaker is good if you have not read the Stormlight? Like, think if you've never read Stormlight and you've yeah, only read sure, Warbreaker dude, because and you think. I mean, yeah, well, it was I'm, so I'm, good, I'm, but I'm just saying, like, the implications. 
of like why you're wanting to know more about Nightblood and stuff. Like, see, but that doesn't even factor in for me liking Warbreaker so much, dude. Light oh, really? Song and Vasher and like, I mean, no, Siri yeah, it's and, still sick, dude. Yeah. By the way, bro. So you know, Cole listens to the audiobooks of all these. We were talking yeah. about Warbreaker a couple weeks ago, bro, bro, bro. bro. The aud- it's how did he say it? It's Sue Sabrin. It's not Seuss Braun or whatever the frick we've been saying, dude. It's Sue Sabrin. Sue Sabrin or Sue Sabron. Sue Sabrin. No that's what I will not. That's what the audio book did. That's, I, I mean, I was like, I was like, wow. So anyway, that's sorry. Not uh, that's not my Seuss Braun. <laughs> um, that's not my God King. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so Actually, books, I don't know. That, I don't know either. It's tough, dude. I just it's tough, love and it's Vasher. so good, but it's tough. Vasher and dude, Light Song. It was and even sick. Siri, dude. I mean, Siri was yeah, a great Siri character. Siri was great, um, too. Um, I like Siri more than I like Vin, probably, I would say. Vivenna? <clears throat> what was the one girl's name who sucked? Vivenna was the one who had the, the arc that both of us we didn't hate it, but it got a little sluggish. Yeah, yeah that one. She was the worst character by far, for sure. Um, I don't know, dude. It is a close call because I did really like it. Though. That's what's tough is I, I did I know. like it a lot. But it's I like want, not even... In a weird... Yeah, I don't know if it's because I needed one more moment. I, I don't know. I guess there were still good moments. I'm trying to say, like, oh, maybe I needed one more moment, like the Kelsey or dying moment, but... Right. Yeah. It's just I mean, tough. Still dude, because... the moment of the whole switcheroo with the what what his real powers are because they're both the whole Yeah, for sure. Whatever and whatnot, but Yeah. So would Kelsier be in your top five all time Sanderson characters so far? I mean, bro, you got Zeth, you got Dalinar, you got Kaladin, you got <laughs> It's really yeah, tough. Yeah, I mean, wit. <laughs> it's tough because of the investment that we have. Like, if we're not, yeah, doing, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we I have so much investment with even it's it's Shalon, yeah. You know, over I mean yeah. months of me reading. So it's not good to consider at this point where we are in the Mistborn yeah. series. We'll have to get through it to really know if how everything falls together. Because it's crazy, dude. Like, even though I I think that I've seen more. Era two, era one, love over era two, but there are many people still who think Mistborn era two is like the best Sanderson has ever done, and that one of those books in particular is the best book. So it's kind of crazy to think that like, I mean, he's just made so many compelling characters and story storylines yeah. and magic systems. Like, that's a here's a question though: What's your favorite magic system so far? We have three that we've read about: the Roshar, whatever Warbreaker's planet is, and now. Mistborn. I lost you got breaths. Second, I think I knew what you were talking about. Yes. Breaths. Breaths, Allomancy, and being a Night Radiant, I guess. Which one's the best magic system or your favorite? Dude, honestly, Breaths was kind of far. I was literally thinking Breaths are so sick. <laughs> They're so cool. <laughs> breaths was low key super fire, especially the way like it worked and how you could get some. Like. I do kind of, in a weird way, like the kind of the chosen one, and like you can't really get these powers. Like you, you either got them or you don't. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes with the whole breaths thing, it's like, well, if you're just savage enough, anyone can rise up. But right. I mean, I could, there's so, but the, I don't know. In a weird way, I like both of them for different yeah. reasons. So it's it's really even tough to say. I mean, yeah. it's really tough to beat shard blades, though. Shard, well, it's just sh- tough to beat having a companion in a spren that turns into a shard blade, but you can also Dude, talk to him. I was thinking <laughs> about that the other day. We still haven't read another book that, like, you really get a good companion. Yeah, other than no, we haven't. Like, I yeah. have, but you haven't. Like, Mm-mm. like uh, the Faithful in the Fallen series, one of the best companions I've ever read. The main mm. character as a companion that lasts all four books. Well, I have read I have read one other, the the Bloodsworn with Orca's tenor and uh Yeah, bro. I mean, that's that not, I, but that's not really it. Yeah, I mean I see what I'm you're saying. I'm just saying that's like the only characters. other like reference I have. So yeah, no, nah, it ain't it, bro. It's, you're it's saying more like a it's literally a companion that has dialogue like and 
Yeah. Well, no, maybe they don't have dialogue, but the emotional like attachment is like Sue. Oh, like, gotcha. Dude, you would love. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, the main character has this wolf, dude. It's massive, and is just so sick. I would love a massive wolf. You're right, dude. That's just a savage, bro. It just is a killer wolf. Like not like some little oh, what? A, no, like I mean savage. And then it's like also, Rush. it's like exactly like Rush. And then. <laughs> In the Empire of the Vampire, his sword talks to him. So it's like mm. um, Nightblood, but like, it's like way sword more. Nimi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it like keeps him awake when he's tired. So he'll like hold on to it and it'll like won't shut up. It's like same vibe personality. But it's like that yeah. super obnoxious. It's so funny though. But yeah. anyway, I love a good companion. So yeah. I like I mean, it too from what I've we from really, Stormlight. Yeah, I haven't read in, like recently I've not really read a lot of companion stuff. So that is yeah. I've never really thought about that. But anyway. Yeah. Maybe Vin will have a companion in the next book. It'll be Kelsier's dead half eaten oh, body. Dude. I would love a little ghost companion. <laughs> that I would be cool. Saying. Honestly. I mean she did have Reen. Always whispering in her mind in the first book, so maybe the second book show off Kelsier in there. Next thing you know, mm. we're on this whole Shalon arc of her being a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. She's on. Uh, then yeah, you'll yeah. love her even I'm more. Like her less and less. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Here oh we go. man! Here we go. Oh, man. <clears throat> who is your? <laughs> this would be a great question to ask you well, now because I know the answer. Favorite? I was going to ask who your. No, I was going to ask who your favorite female is in Sanderson's book so far, but I know oh. you're going to say Yasna because she's amazing. Yeah, they so. know. Um, I like Navani. But anyway. There's a lot Navani's of female great. characters I Siri. like. I just, Siri's great. I don't like the teenage deal. I don't. I know, like, dude. I'm just messing with you, bro. Lift. I'm just I pointing don't. out your misogynistic ways. <laughs> my my minor. If only It's only if they're minors. I said misogynistic. Yeah, I said only if they're minors. Oh. Like, not a minor, probably. Fair enough. Like, not minor to major. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, are they above 18? Really, are they (laughs) above 21? (laughs) Are they paying... Are they paying for car insurance? Then I'll... I'll Oh, no, dude, you better cut that part out from earlier. (laughs) Why me? That was. I uh, mean, I definitely will. I'll put it in the deleted scenes. <laughs> we'll we'll put it on the Patreon. <laughs> deleted scene. Patreon. Oh, so Are anything else that we've left following? out? Um, uh, for Patreon, I mean, yeah, dude, for sure. I'm trying to look through the characters. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we did did a good job. This book's just not as long, so. Um, yeah. No. It makes sense that it would dude, be half as long of a video. Dude, I need to get off Copper Mine before. God, dude. Yeah, it's just, it's all you do is scroll man. once. You're like. Dude, especially like, with the way I did? read, dude, my eyes be jumping. I got jumping. Oh, yeah, eyes. dude. I'll be, I'll be I'm like, going oh. to the last sentence in the paragraph. Like, what am I going to be getting from this? <laughs> <laughs> I Literally, I time, just. Bro. It says magic. It says setting, and it has magic. It says allomancy. Frick hear me, and then something else that I feel like I shouldn't know about. And I started reading, and I'm like, <laughs> Well, dude, I already know something about. I've told you this, I'm not gonna say what it is, but I already know something about Seiza that I know for a fact I'm not supposed to know right now. <laughs> I lost you, Frick. Can you hear me? Wait, yeah, I can hear you now. You, you said you, you were like, I found out something about, and then. I just I found out something about Seiza that I'm not supposed to know yet, like at all. I know something. I heard that, someone, it, honestly, dude. I was, it might be the last thing that happens in this series, and I know it. <laughs> I definitely don't want to know. I I did hear something about like Seiza having a depression arc. That's all I heard, which is probably a spoiler too. Oh, but no, uh, freaking Kaladin 2.0. Here we go. <laughs> or I guess really Kaladin's the Seiza 2.0 if that's the case. Um. As but as anyway, they, um, as long as I what? No, nah, I mean as long as he, I he doesn't. I don't see how he could have a depression arc. Hopefully, I just heard that wrong. But I mean, anyway. who knows, man? Mm-hmm. Um, everybody, everybody be on that depression arc these days. So <laughs> who knows? It's too realistic, Brandon. Um, too realistic. 
Do real, bro. Next thing I know, you're going to have election fraud in Roshar. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, oh, bro. man. So, uh, yeah, uh, is that it? Is there anything else? Nah, I mean, I feel like we covered a lot of it. It's a shorter book, so compared to Stormlit. Yeah. But uh, hopefully yeah, we get so the next we liked one up it. soon. I could see myself finishing this book before next weekend. Yeah, I mean, I probably will too. I'm I'm pretty on track hitting Napoleon and I already started the second one today, so I'm on phone him. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for some more videos. We're gonna have a lot more content we're trying to put out here, just doing some different stuff, having some different people on, doing a couple of like series or whatever. So stick around with me and uh, Billy Boyd here, um, and we'll see you next time. Peace.